regeneration, employability, fairness. But in the end, isn't that what we're all striving Liverpool to be? Isn't that what we're all working towards? I call on all politicians, the private businesses, voluntary and third sectors, to support the Mayor's pledge to join other UK cities in gaining World Health Organisation AIDS friendly accreditation. To internationally recognise Liverpool as a city that has all these things and much, much more. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Hi, Lord Mayor. It will come as no surprise that Councillor Woodhouse's maiden speech would be on a topic so dear to him. His role and devotion as mayoral lead for older people surpasses many roles within this chamber. Long before he was appointed to mayoral lead, it was evident that the welfare of the mature person was already his top priority within the ward that Gerard <laughs> represented. His skills and organising events, fundraising and the writing of bids is in fact second to none. It's well documented and researched that loneliness, isolation and non-activity leads to many types of illnesses. So in effect, Lord Mayor, Jared's role is one of preventative, holistic and indeed pastoral nature. It's no surprise to those of us that know Gerard on a personal level, that he definitely inherited the caring gene from his mother Mary, who to this day is highly revered in the Byron Streets, Scotland Road area of the city, for all the work she did in the 70s, 80s and 19s, championing women and getting the local women into the local jobs, especially in the polytechnic. We are now informed, Lord Mayor, at government level from the Office of National Statistics that the baby boom gener generation, people born in the 1960s, are the loneliest and within this decade, people in their 40s, 50s and 60s Living alone has increased by 23%. Health Secretary Jeremy Hunt has urged people to invite elderly relatives into their homes and to set, and I quote, it's a national shame that as many as 800,000 people in this country are chronically lonely. Lord Mayor, I personally equate sitting in this chamber as going to church. As my dad used to say, it's not what you do in church, it's what you do when you come out that counts. And I say that Gerard, Councillor Woodhouse, is the finest example of this. Please support the motion. Thank you. Councillor Owen. First of all, huge congratulations to everybody who's made a maiden speech. 10 out of 10, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. In my opinion, this is an incredibly important motion and should be supported by all of us in this chamber, regardless of which party we represent. We must all work to ensure that Liverpool gains the World Health Organization accreditation and to ensure the well-being and health of our elderly people. Our great city needs to be accredited so that we can further support those in need. People, as we know, are living longer these days and many will need extra support and help to survive. <clears throat> this has to be managed despite the most appalling and stringent budget cuts we are suffering in our adult health social care budgets. It is appalling. 
I echo Councillor Woodhouse's praise for the support given by the RSLs, by our City Council staff, Jackie Connolly and many others too numerous to mention. Without their help and support, these events just would not take place. I am privileged to attend these events. Not, I don't particularly like the bingo, but I love the cabaret sessions, the parties, the trips out, and the older people's awards. I've seen firsthand what a difference it makes to the lives of many of our residents. I talk to them. One lady in particular told me that these events had changed her life. It had made her life worthwhile. She now had people to talk to, people to socialise with. And of course, my friend, I can't say it, like Sharon, Jared. Gerard <laughs> is a local hero. Isolation and loneliness can be devastating to people, especially those who have no family or friends to support them. Imagine living alone day after day, looking at four walls or the television. Could be for months. These people need our support and this is one way of providing it. I commend Councillor Woodhouse for his unstinting efforts and long may they continue. We all need to support the Mayor, Mayor Anderson in this, so that we gain this accreditation. It is essential. Um, I did ask Jared when I was getting my older person's award, and our shy and retiring councillor said, you're not old enough. <laughs> now, that is despite the fact I had a bus pass for five years and I've got a significant birthday next week. I take it as a compliment. But seriously, it is important that we all support this because who knows, any one of us in this chamber today could need extra help and support in later life. Please support this motion. Councillor Woodhouse, you have the right to reply. No? <laughs> Are you sure? Can we say that's uh, all in favour? Is that unanimous? Yes. Okay, thank you. Can we now move on to uh, motion uh, 15? The EU referendum by Councillor Sharon Connor, next more on Paul Brandt. Can I invite Councillor Sharon Connor to move the motion standing in her name? And advise the council. Look, look, mate, just before you do, uh, I recently attended the EU uh, Parliament. Depending on which way you view the structure of the trip, just to see what it might amount to a pecuniary interest, so I will declare it as such, okay. leave the room, won't take part, and we'll ask for my name to be taken off the, uh, the motion. That's okay. So you'd be delighted that I won't be able to speak on this particular motion. <laughs> Probably increase the quality of the debate. <laughs> Can I? Can I declare a few interest because I work for the European Parliament? Is there any more declaration? Uh, yes. Sorry, my lord, but can we ask the Chief Executive for a point of clarification? There's a number of us who've attended the European Parliament, and for a bono excuse this afternoon, half the Chamber may have to leave at this stage. So now, if it's any payment or provision of any other financial benefits other than from your council or authority made or provided within the relevant period, in respect of any expenses incurred by you in carrying out duties as a member or towards your election expenses. So as I understand that you've received any money in connection with the European Parliament visit you've described, it would be better to be uh, out of the chamber minute. In that case, I shall pass on the same, uh, the, the same uh, apologies and leave the room.
don't really hold me, don't tell me to look. Anyone else do you know Jody? Surprise. Surprise. The LTA. We're just seeking clarification because we quite more of what's happened to me in the chamber, I suspect, if that's the case. to go to a trip to the European Commission or Parliament and the Council has paid or another public body, that's one thing. If the EU has paid, you've clearly got a conflict around that particular issue. Second point applies for a period of 12 months and that period of 12 months applies retrospectively from today to 11th November 2014. So if you fall within that category, you better be outside the if anybody's left in the chamber, then we might be able to receive Okay, can we? Okay. Chris is going out to explain that to them. More for them to be out. Yeah, that's what you say. Thank you, man. Okay, can we now resume uh, the meeting and I believe all the uh, members who need to declare an interest have now left the chamber. So can I advise the council that this will be Sharon, uh, Councillor Sharon Connors uh, made the speech. Sharon. Um, thank you Lord Mayor and thank you for everyone else who's left in the chamber. Um, it is my maiden speech and if there is any long pauses feel free to clap along the way. Um, on Sunday, I along with many of my council colleagues attended a service of remembrance 
and of course today is Remembrance Day. It recalled specifically the many horrors of the Great War, when for over four years war raged fiercely in Europe at great human and economic cost. A war that left millions dead, minds and bodies broken, economies shattered, and set in motion a sequence of events that would shape the first half of the 20th century. If the past 70 years have been free from this blight, it is no small measure thanks to the European Union. It is thanks to the peace and prosperity which has been achieved through the cohesion and integration of the foundation of European coal and steel community and its gradual transformation into the European Union of 28 nations have brought. In all honesty, Britain could at best be described as a reluctant European. Having joined in 1973, our membership has already survived one referendum in 1975. Indeed, at present, any outcome of any future referendum is far from certain. Yet for Liverpool, a city, Tory politicians were prepared to leave to the cruel fate of managed decline in the 1980s. The long-term economic consequence of a decade of factionalism continued to exert a grip. Our city has suffered. With poor economic potential, we lost industry, skills and jobs. Between the 1980s and 90s, the city's population reduced by 22% and dropped by 18%. Europe has been a lifeline. Europe has been the means of helping to provide our city the bright future that its heritage, reputation and most of all, that its people deserve. It is a significant catalyst for this lifeline came with the classification of Objective One status in 1994. It was the start of a fruitful partnership between Liverpool and Jory. It was also recognition that Liverpool, once the most important port in the empire, had been reduced to one of the most deprived regions in Jory. The future of the people in our city have been significantly changed by European <coughs> funding. That change has been both meaningful and permanent. Not only did the funding result in major inward investment, it also provided a catalyst for future economic growth. In my world I represent Alison and Hunt Crofts, I often hear people ask, what has Europe ever done for me? The answer is simple. Our city, our region, has received more than two billion in EU funding. The lion's share received by Liverpool. That's 50,000 jobs being created in the city region as a result of EU funding. Liverpool John Lennon Airport received funding towards an £84 million investment programme. Liverpool secured £15 million to regenerate the rundown roadworks area of the city successfully transforming the area into a vibrant and attractive place for new businesses. Liverpool Arena and Conference, Conference Centre, the largest project supported by the Objective One programme, has provided a multi-use arena at the King's Dock. Since opening in 2008, has hosted hundreds of events and conferences, along with the 480 million economic impact from its two and a half million visitors and delegates between 2012 and 2015. The Youth Employment Initiative, £19 million allocated to Liverpool City Region to support unemployed 16 to 19 year olds back into work, back into education and back into training, which has resulted in a considerable drop in youth unemployment from 25% to 16%. ACME established to support the creative industry sector. There's so many I could go on. Since becoming a councillor in May, I have spent time with Liverpool Vision and I've seen some of this fantastic work. The EU provides a resource that is stable and provides access to finance 
and potential to do projects which ordinarily may not have been possible. Under the current UK government, Liverpool have faced unprecedented cuts. The EU funding resource becomes an important line of investment for Liverpool and the city region to continue key projects, schemes and initiatives. But there are also many other benefits of the EU. As a proud trade unionist, I am grateful for the work, benefits and protection. The EU is the biggest single market in the world. Membership means businesses in Liverpool can sell their products to 5 million customers. Since the establishment of the free movement of people between European states, tourism has soared in Liverpool and the visitor economy is worth 3.8 billion to the city region. Our relationship with Europe has gave our city and our people the bright future they deserve. Let us send the message to the rest of the UK that Liverpool, the European capital of culture in 2008, is proud to be part of the EU and will be supporting the Yes campaign. We have notice of an amendment by Councillor Crowe. Is it seconded? Councillor Crowe. Okay, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, excellent uh, made the speech, Councillor Connor. Congratulations on that. Um, now, the Green Party also support staying in the EU. We will be campaigning with a yes vote alongside other, other parties within this chamber. And so we essentially agree with the thrust of this, this motion, to be honest. You'll see from our amendment that we highlight other things, as well as the all-important investment in Liverpool, we highlight the things such as environmental protection, the protection of workers' rights that we think are also extremely important things which we value within the EU. And so, actually, we've had a discussion amongst ourselves, and one of the main things that concerns Green Party members within this motion is actually mentioned celebrating the um, growth of Liverpool John Lennon Airport. Airport expansion is anathema to, to a lot of people within the Green Party. So probably without that, we would be more than happy to actually um, vote in favour along with, along with yourselves. So we're going to propose directly to the writers of the motion that if we could have a minor amendment to remove that mention of that, we'd withdraw our motion and we'd just all vote in favour. <laughs> <laughs> we, we never said that we're opposed to having an airport. Um, we're just opposed to say voting yes for <laughs> In that case, okay, can we just? Oh, in that case, we'll move the uh, carry on now, and uh, Councillor Brown is going to speak to the amendment. Councillor Small. Well, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. I'm not going to accept the amendment, but first of all, can I just um, congratulate uh, Councillor Connor on his uh, speech. I thought that was an excellent contribution that sets out, I think, why um, Liverpool should um, get behind the Remain campaign for the EU. I think it would be a complete disaster for this city if the UK were to move out of the EU. Lord Mayor, I sit on the um, European Social Investment um, Committee. Um, of the Structural Investment Fund Committee of the left, and I represent the combined authority on that. And I've seen firsthand when we're evaluating the next European programme for 2014 to 2020, the benefits that that will bring to this city, whether it's with Liverpool in work, whether it's with um, supporting businesses, whether it's supporting people to start up businesses, whether it's tackling the issue of youth unemployment, Without that funding, without the UK being an active member of the EU, that would not exist in Liverpool and this city would be a lot worse off for that. And Councillor Radford and others, your sceptics, may well say, well, the UK is a net contributor into the EU and it's our money that we're giving and we're just getting that back. That's nonsense when you've got a Tory government that has disinvested 
year on year into Liverpool. And if you look at what happened with Objective One in 1994, we've had 15 years of Thatcherism, 15 years of cuts, 15 years of disinvestment into this city, of this city being on the decline. And what we managed to achieve in, in, in that time with Objective One, and if you look at where Liverpool is today, we are no longer one of the poorest parts of Europe because we traded our way out of that, we've used that Objective One funding to grow our economy and to get jobs, and we've built on that. The other reason, Lord Mayor, that we need to get behind this as a city is because of the benefits to the economy. With companies like Jaguar Land Rover, with the automotive supply chain um, in South Liverpool, with life sciences, with pharma, none of those companies would come to Liverpool and would invest in this city if we weren't an active part of the EU. And the debate earlier on Lord Mayor about the Commonwealth I think is really significant because Liverpool is I think quite uniquely placed to take advantage of where we are with the EU but also with a wider global economy. We need to be a part of that. And what this motion is asking for is for this chamber, for this council, to get behind the Remain campaign to go away, for, to ask the Chief Executive to go away, to build on the work that we did with the um, Mayoral um, European Commission and um, to set out what the benefits are for the, for the UK, for Liverpool remaining within the EU and what the negatives are if we were to leave, how that would damage this city and to bring that back to this chamber so we can have a debate as part of that national debate as part of the referendum before 2017. Councillor Brown. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, can I just state to begin with that we, uh, the Green Party, are in favour of remaining in the uh, European Union, one of them, opposing uh, the, uh, the sort of thrust of the motion. Um, what we'd like to say is that um, the EU has benefited through uh, improvements to air pollution through regulation of uh, by EU directives uh, since 1984, including the 1988 Large Combustion Plants Directive, which regulates the emissions of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. Um, Catalytic converters on vehicles have been mandatory on petrol vehicles since 1992 and diesel vehicles since 2008. Uh, more needs to be done, of course, because we do know that we have problems with air pollution still. But these have been a good start to the process and changing our reputation uh, from what we used to know as the dirty man of Europe. There's also been improvements to water and soil pollution through EU, uh, through EU directives since 1986. We've had cleaning bay of water since 1998, um, and so in the 1950s, the Thames, which was biologically dead, uh, now contains many species of fish and even seals and dolphins swim as far as London. Uh, we've got better wildlife protection through the 1979 Wild Bird Directive and the 1992 Habitats Directive, uh, which have led to the establishment of a Europe-wide network of protected sites uh, called Natura 2000. Um, more recently, we've cooperated in setting targets for uh, reduced emissions, which contribute to climate change. Uh, as uh, Councillor Connor pointed out, we've had improved employment rights through the work Working Time Directive, uh, which puts a limit of 48 hours per week on full-time work. Um, guaranteed maternity leave of 14 weeks for mothers. And young people have benefited from various programmes and uh, with this high levels of youth employment, the European Parliament's Youth Employment Initiative. As a consequence, we want to see a reformed uh, EU, which has the following, and that is to build support for radical reform of the EU, increasing its transparency and accountability, to refocus its objectives on cooperation and environmental sustainability, rather than competition and free trade, and to campaign for the rights of member states to exercise greater control over their own economies. Thank you. Could I ask, could I just ask members to refrain from talking in the chamber? Obviously, there is a debate going on. Could I ask Councillor Pendergast? Yes, yes, uh, Robert. Can I just say that?
I've been involved with a few members still in the council, I'm the Dean, Steve Radford, 94, a couple of others. Um, an objective one was still, was first brought to the city. Um, and since then, we've had very little help and support from the national government, the Tory side, in putting, providing match funding. Liverpool, under the Labour administration, and along with the industry, set up the Merseyside Special Investment Fund. That, money, that was set up by about 95, 96, and it's still running in its various form, helping hundreds of companies and organisations to get going that they can't get off the bankers to top up to enable them to expand and create jobs. Even today, we've had the, um, the new core field holdings that, that they're heavily, you can call it subsidised, finance, call what you want. There's money off your building that port. This port now exports more than it ever did. There's a bigger traffic through the port in its containerisation, and that'll be drastically increased when you get the Pan Ocean ships coming in. That's being paid for by European money. Last time we had a chance of European funding coming through, this council supported